I find the reason why Ann Taylor said that is to probably give us, at least the people that are questioning things, something to look at when it comes to that one dog hair that was found at Brian Koberger's apartment. Hey guys, this is Jules with True Crime Reactions. Disclaimer, everything stated in this video is my opinion and my opinion only. And just like everything else in these cases we discuss here on this channel, everything is alleged. Okay, so the over seven hour live stream for the change of venue hearing from last week was pretty boring. Actually, scratch that, hella boring, okay? Especially for those of you here on my side, because we've gone through all the documentation and all the things that were talked about in court is literally everything that was talked about in the documents, the pie graphs, the charts, the statistics, how everything was put together, all of that boring, boring technical stuff, right? I've mentioned this in two different community posts and now I wanna come out here and just put my thoughts on it out here. I feel like it's important I feel like it's something that probably should be addressed, which is what I'm, I'm doing now. But I noticed that in my second community post about this, when I use this very specific word, I, I guess maybe it just didn't trigger what I was talking about, which is fine. But it also tells me that maybe not a lot of people are talking about this. And again, it might not be very important, but to me in my brain, it is, therefore here I am. So the only real new thing, at least for now, that I remember learning from the entire over seven hours is that Brian Koberger apparently has a dog. Why is that important, Jules? I don't understand. Lots of people have dogs. Cool. Lots of people are not on trial or about to be on trial for quadruple murder and also had a piece of animal hair apparently found at their apartment. And there's also an animal involved in the crime scene. Well, I think Anne mentioned this is because it seems like every time we have a hearing, the defense th team, I think is strategically doing this. I think they just decide what piece of evidence they're gonna try to pick apart and they figure out how to subliminally, I guess, put it in there because the conversation or at least the portion of the hearing where Ann Taylor was standing up and speaking about this was the very beginning opening arguments where they're talking about how the media talks about all these horrible bad things. They don't wanna talk about this. There's not a media story talking about Brian Koberger's right to be presumed innocent. There's not a media story talking about Brian Koberger being loved by his family. Nobody's talking about the good grades he achieved all through his undergraduate career and graduate programs. Nobody's talking about the dog that he loves and helps train. The dog that he loves and helps train. The dog that he loves and helps train. It's all negative. It's false. It's misleading. It's stuff that's rumor and never coming into court. Now, I find it odd the wording that she uses here because she could have stopped at loves, but she went further with that statement and then says, helps train present tense as in at the time that he was arrested before what he was currently doing which was helping currently train a dog is now past tense because now he's been in jail for almost two years i find the reason why ann taylor said that is to probably give us at least the people that are questioning things something to look at when it comes to that one dog hair that was found at Brian Koberger's apartment. Ann Taylor has already stood up in court a long time ago at this point, guys. This is such old news. But blatantly stated, there is no connection between Brian Koberger and the victims. And there's no explanation for the lack of evidence, which means no explanation, no proof of a cleanup for there being lack of evidence. If they can't explain why there's no evidence, that means they have no proof that anything was cleaned up, corrupted, changed, manipulated, any of those things. That's what that means. <laughs> so whenever we got the inventory report for Brian Koberger's apartment, which by the way, we've gone over twice on this channel, we went over it in the very beginning of the case. And then we actually did a live maybe about a month or so ago where we went back, we went back. So most of you guys here that are watching this, most of you guys that have been here for a while are very familiar with the fact that there was an animal hair, one singular animal hair, according to the list, that was taken from Brian Koberger's apartment as evidence. 
as evidence because of Murphy. Okay. Murphy was Kaylee's dog. Most of you guys know who was found in Kaylee's room while Kaylee and Maddie were found in Maddie's room during the event. Now, when the detectives get there, the homicide detectives actually got to 1122 King Road. It was four hours after the 911 call. Therefore, four hours after first responders first walked in, four hours after doors were checked and opened and all the things. Now, we as the public, as far as I know, do not know for certain if Murphy was actually behind a closed door to Kaylee's room whenever the first responders got there or not. I am assuming, yes. That doesn't mean that's how it happened. I just think by how we're being told things and how there was no, apparently no DNA or anything like that on Murphy, apparently, that it would seem to me that he was found behind the shut door of Kaylee's bedroom, which is another reason why I think that Kaylee might have heard something and left Murphy in her room behind a closed door before then walking in on what was going on in Maddie's room. That's another big reason why my theory has been and always will be she was supposed to be in her bedroom, ended up in Maddie's after the fact, but they weren't supposed to be falling asleep in the same room. That's just, that's just me. So of course, whenever the animal hair was brought up, everyone who was just on the side of pointing the finger at whoever's name was out there instantly was like, oh, that's Murphy's. It's going to be Murphy's hair. It has to be Murphy's hair. But notice that nothing else has come out about the hair. Nothing at all. Not even that it looked similar to the color of Murphy. We've had nothing besides the fact that Ann Taylor can stand up in court and claim there's no connection between the victims and Brian. But we know for a fact that Steve is saying it too. Steve Consalvis, the father of one of the victims, Kaylee Consalvis's father, is telling an attorney here on YouTube in an email that the state is having issues connecting things to Brian. Well, if one plus one doesn't equal two, then I don't know really what else to tell you guys. So in my opinion, if the hair was Murphy's or if there was a possibility that the hair was Murphy's and Taylor couldn't make that statement, Steve wouldn't be making that statement either. So I think maybe Ann Taylor put it out there just to show that there's more to Brian's life than we know because she's mentioning it again in the present tense. Nobody's talking about the dog that he loves and helps train. As far as we know, Brian didn't have his actual own dog. We've never heard a word about an animal besides Buddy. Besides Buddy. Which is maybe another reason why Ann Taylor mentioned it, because there's no way in hell she doesn't know the speculation about Buddy and what a lot of people believe that are on the guilty side of this situation with Brian Koberger. So maybe she mentioned it to maybe make them stop their crazy stuff. I don't know. But apparently Brian Koberger has a dog in his life that he loves and helps train. And I think train is a very strange word to use. Whenever I think about somebody having a pet, I don't think about them training their pet. I don't think about me training my pets. Whenever I talk about my dogs, I don't say, oh, I love and train them. Or whenever I talk about somebody else and the way they are with their animal, I don't say, oh yeah, they love and train their dog. So I think that maybe the word train is being used very specifically here. And again, I could be reading into that. I don't know. Okay. I could be, but that's what my brain is telling me. And I wanted to put it out here to see what you guys thought about it. Whenever I explain it this way, it's a very specific word. Why not just stop at, they never talk about the dog that Brian loves or the dog that Brian grew up with and maybe left back in Pennsylvania and was happy and excited to see whenever he went home for Christmas or maybe it's a friend's dog, a girlfriend's dog we don't know about. Who do you train normally? See, this is another thing. And I really thought that people that thought Brian Koberger was some sort of informant would have picked up on that and really taken off with it. But unless those people don't grace my channel, which I doubt, I actually know for a fact, a lot of people on in those arenas do watch my channel. So I'm surprised that the people that believe that aren't on this thinking that it means he's training canines for something. Honestly, I don't know. And I'm not saying that's the case either. I don't believe Brian is any sort of informant. That's me personally. I could be wrong again, because who really knows in these cases anymore? Seriously, everything is such a damn dumpster fire, chaotic hurricane tsunami of a mess. So who knows? I don't personally believe he's any sort of informant. I don't know. But I do find it strange that Ann Taylor decided to use that word. 
Let me know what you guys think though, down in the comments. And if you like the way that I present this information and give my opinion, please not forget to leave a like on your way out. Subscribe to the channel if you are not subscribed already. And don't forget to make sure that the notification bell is set to all so you don't miss any of my rants, reactions, reviews, updates, or deep dives. See y'all.